Here's the organ donor. I picked this treadmill up at our local uh, materials reuse center. It's basically a junkyard where you can buy the stuff. I got it for $40. If you are paying for it, like I did, you definitely want to make sure it works. It had been out in the rain for a few days, so it was a little scary to plug it in and turn it on, but it, it fired up fine and did what it was supposed to do, so I came home with it. So I've removed the console. Uh, it looks like the only thing I'm going to need from the console is the speed controller. Down here is where the motor was and the circuitry that was related to, to running the motor. So I pulled all that. This is pretty much gutted for everything I'm going to need from it, I think. Mine came with some big dusty clumps of dog hair. Okay, so I've removed the motor from the lathe. Uh, I also removed all the brackets and mounting hardware. So I have a clean slate to work with. I also removed the wiring uh, as far back as the main on-off switch. I would like to keep that where it is. So that's my plan at the moment, is just to wire the new motor from that switch forward. So here's the motor out of the treadmill, uh, shown next to the deceased. As you can see, they're different sizes and shapes, so we're definitely going to have to do a little bit of work in order to get it to fit. Uh, two and a quarter horse. It's going to be a nice improvement over the half horsepower motor that was in the lathe. So of course the shaft diameters are different on the two motors, so that means I can't just bolt up the stepped pulley off the jet motor uh, onto this this shaft. Uh, but it turns out over here, this is the cast iron flywheel that came with the treadmill motor, and that had a pulley attached to it too. And it turns out that the V grooves on that are pretty much identical to the V grooves on the stepped pulley down there. So I just hacksawed this off and uh, dressed it a little bit so it looks pretty and now I have something that screws right on I'm going to be able to use the the belt that was already on the lathe and the pulley on the headstock of the lathe and it's going to work out great fortunately this motor turns in the same direction as the jet motor did in the lathe so I don't have to mess with anything to get it to turn the right direction and the reverse threading is uh, perfect for this application, and it's not going to back the pulley off the, the threads on the shaft. Going into this, I wasn't sure how I was going to actually get the motor to mount in the lathe in any kind of elegant fashion. Worst case scenario was going to be some hose clamps and duct tape and maybe a 2x4. Uh, but fortunately, this really stout U-bracket has been spot welded to the case of the motor to mount it in the treadmill and that ended up working really well uh, for this application. I've already done quite a bit of cutting on it. So far this is the only fabrication I've really had to do in order to get this conversion to work. Here's the bracket I made next to the bracket that came with the lathe that mounted the motor. As you can see there's uh, some similarities. I basically used this as a template when I was laying this out uh, as far as where the, the holes needed to be and the, the basic shape for clearance. And now it would have been really easy to just modify this this piece to fit the new motor, you know, to cut this out of it and then weld this on. But the reason I didn't is when I'm undertaking projects like this, I like to leave as many original parts intact as possible in case something doesn't work out or I ever decide to change it back in the future. This is one less part that I'm going to have to buy or find. And it was fun. It was a fun challenge to make this anyway. This turned out looking pretty nice, actually, nicer than I was expecting it to. It's stout, it's 5 16 inch plate steel. Uh, and the main reason I used that is because it's what I had laying around. A uh, quarter probably would have been better because I had to grind a few things for clearance. What I used to make it pretty much were a drill press, an angle grinder, and a hand file. And then uh, just dressed it up a little bit on the, the bench sander. So I've cut this down pretty much at this point. Uh, this has been all trimmed to fit in the lathe. Those holes are drilled to plug weld. Uh, onto the mounting bracket that I, I made to attach it to the lathe. Hopefully that's going to work out well. It seemed like the best solution. There wasn't a lot of clearance uh, to put bolts in there. And uh, I just got to get it get it welded together and 
then mount it, and then I'll do do all the wiring. So I've gone ahead and welded the bracket to the motor. All I have is a little wire feed flux core welder, but managed to get these three plug welds here done. I think they're pretty strong. And now all I have to do is get this mounted in the lathe and wired up. We're getting close. Here's the motor mounted in the lathe. Everything pretty much went according to plan. The only thing that came up is the bearing housing here makes contact with the cross member on the lathe sooner than I was anticipating, specifically these little uh, cast-in supports. So there's one up there that's, that's hitting the cross member. Uh, and what that boils down to is that I am pretty much at the end of my adjustable range on my bracket here. Uh, so if I were going to be doing this again, I would be making this bracket with more material up here. So I was at least in the middle or more towards the other end of my range of adjustability. But it works, so I'm not going to complain. So because I wasn't able to mount the motor exactly where I wanted to height-wise in the lathe, I was also forced to move the belt uh, one step larger on the pulley and the headstock of the lathe. So that's going to slow things down a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to get that one-to-one -one ratio that I was initially shooting for. Here's the rest of the stuff I pulled from the treadmill that I think I'm going to need to run the motor. This is the only only piece off the console that I took. That's the speed control. Uh, this this circuit board. Uh, this treadmill came with a 15 amp built-in breaker, a little trip switch. So uh, I'm going to leave that hooked up and then incorporate it. Maybe it'll help prevent me from burning out this motor if I get carried away. Also, this this looks important, so I'm going to leave it attached. Here's all the wiring. Uh, has it has it came out of the treadmill going from the console and down to where the motor was Obviously, I'm gonna have to shorten a lot of that wiring up because I don't I don't want to have a pet tangle every time I pull the lathe out So when I took all the wiring off of the treadmill uh, Anywhere there was a connection I was disconnecting uh, I, I marked them so I knew how to hook it back up uh, fortunately on this circuit board here you can see that they've marked uh, red and white and black, so that made it a lot easier. I didn't mark some of those. But interestingly, uh, inside the treadmill was this piece of paper stuck on. It's a wiring diagram, which is really helpful, especially for people like me that are a whole lot better at taking things apart than putting them back together. In case anything ever gets, uh, you know, I lose track of anything, I can defer to this. The only thing that I think I'm going to change as far as wiring goes is this uh, is set up so that you need this little plastic key in order to make a connection in there and let the motor run. So since I want to keep the, the on off switch that's already on the lathe, I think I'm going to bypass that. That's just this, this little uh, switch here that looks like it just interrupts the, the power uh, when the key is removed. So. I'm going to just wire those two wires together and bypass this part and hopefully that's gonna gonna work out fine. Here's the control box. All the components are mounted in it and it's wired up and ready to go. I found this really cool steel timer control box. Uh, it didn't have the timer in it anymore. It fits it perfect. I just had to drill four holes in the back so I could mount the components on the inside. Drill another hole here and file it square so I could incorporate the breaker that I wanted to keep and then drill one hole on the lid to mount the speed control. And probably what took me the longest was cutting out the original speed settings from the console of the treadmill. It's just not nearly as cool without that, right? Here's a quick tour of the wiring. So I wired from the on-off switch of the lathe. I used the existing mounting brackets to clamp the cable to the lathe. Where the wires came out of the motor, I just tried to uh, bundle them and tape them out of the way from moving parts as much as possible. Then I taped everything together, the whole length. There's a couple connectors in there that are taped together so they don't wobble loose. Then there was a knockout on the side of the timer control box, uh, and that was in the perfect spot. So I knocked that out and put in a, a rubber grommet to keep the sharp edges from rubbing the wires. and. That's it. I shortened up all the wiring pretty tight. Uh, you could certainly make this longer if you wanted. 
I want to find a way to mount the control box on the side of the lathe here. So I made everything pretty short so I didn't have a lot of cord laying around uh, when it was in place. But it also sits just fine right here. Uh, that seems a pretty logical spot to have it. So even if I don't mount it, I'm going to be happy with this. Another thing I'm going to have to do is fabricate some kind of shroud to protect the motor here. Now the jet motor that was in here was fully enclosed for very good reason, I'm sure, but this motor isn't. You can see the, through the bedway of the lathe there's a straight shot down to the open end of the motor and the bearing housing. That is a recipe for disaster to have wood chips and sawdust falling in there. Here's what I came up with for the motor shroud. It's just a piece of rectangular roof flashing that's cut and bent to the appropriate shape. There's a flange there that I drilled that I can mount it with the motor bolt. Uh, so far it's staying in place and doing a good job of keeping chips out of the motor. Also, anytime you're working with flashing, there will be blood. Oh, that's satisfying. In keeping with most things in my life, it's only been four years between taking the footage and finally getting around to editing it into a little video. I mean, never put off until tomorrow what you can put off until the day after tomorrow, right? I did figure this would be a good chance to do uh, an update of sorts, just to let you know what worked and, and what didn't and what to keep an eye out for. First off, it works great. I really couldn't be happier with it. I've put in hundreds of hours on this uh, since the conversion with virtually no problems. I do wish I would have made the wiring between the lathe and the controller a little bit longer. Uh, that did end up being an issue. I never found a good way to mount it on the actual body of the lathe. And so for a couple of years, it just sort of floated around next to the lathe and would get covered with wood shavings as I went along. and. Uh, it ended up being kind of a pain, uh, so I just ended up mounting it on a post uh, next to the lathe, but it was always at the end of its wiring. Even another six inches would have been good. And that is the cause of really the only issue I've had with this, is at one point it did stop working, and uh, it turns out that one of the little connectors that was taped up in here had had just come loose. I took a little bit of troubleshooting to figure out why it wasn't working, but that's all it was. Leave yourself a little extra as opposed to not enough like I did. The only other issues I've had mainly have to do with what the brain box thinks the motor needs to do uh, to be in a treadmill, and it doesn't really translate that well to just running a lathe. One of the things is that when you, when you turn it on and... It, you know, it runs, but then if I turn the main switch off here and then I turn it back on, I have to turn this back down to zero and then turn it up again. It won't stay at, uh, you know, stay at the same RPM it was set at. And I understand that's a, probably a pretty big safety feature on a treadmill, uh, but when it comes to wood turning, it's just one more step. And when you're turning some things and you have, you know, the perfect RPM where it's not vibrating, and then you have to turn it off and sharpen something um, and then turn it back on, you have to find that sweet spot again. But overall, it, it's not that big a deal. I suppose if I had a digital readout of RPMs, that would make that a lot more tolerable, but I don't, and the, I don't really feel the need for one. And like I said, it's not uh, that big an obstacle. So the other issue is that when this motor is under a load, it tries to compensate for that and stay at the same RPM that you have it set at. And again, for a treadmill, I understand why that would be a good thing, but uh, for wood turning, it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but what happens is when you let off your cut, if you let off really quickly, uh, the motor kind of over revs because it's still compensating for that load. And most of the time, even that's not a big deal, but I do turning of green wood for bulb blanks, and those are heavy and they're often out of balance until you get the shape you want. And if you let off a cut kind of quickly on that, then you have uh, something that's out of balance, spinning wildly and throwing water at you. And it's it's a little scary, but I've just learned to let off my cut slowly. And most of the time it works out fine. But overall, they're not big issues. They're easy to compensate for. And like I said, I, I really couldn't be happier.